Hello guys and welcome to round 15 in Japan for the Race Department GP2 series and as per usual we are on board with my qualifying lap you can see I'm on the prime tyres and this is my first lap uh, quite a uh, quite an untidy lap really it wasn't pushing overly hard it was mainly to get a timing but all my other laps didn't really go to plan so this is my first and only really decent time so it was a fully dry weekend there was 0% chance of rain in both qualifying and the race so didn't have to worry about changing setup or compromising with anything so it's just basically a full out dry setup and go as fast as you can really and I wasn't feeling overly confident I knew I had pretty reasonable pace uh, expecting like a top five, maybe a podium, uh, but then you can see there's only nine people in the lobby, so I was thinking maybe a podium would be good. Um, but I did get my first ever podium here back in season two, so I was hoping that I could repeat that um, fate. And as we come to the second sector split, you can see I'm within a tenth of pole position, and I run massively wide there, and that basically marks up my lap and <laughs> yeah so as we come across the line using the rest of my curves and DRS I put it provisionally P3 uh, which ended up P4 as powers are up managed to take pole um, another, another pole but I f unfortunately for him he disconnected uh, before the race started uh, so I was basically in P3 uh, but as you can see, every all the leaders are on primes. I think top five anyway. I don't know if Techno Elite was, uh, but on primes. But the leaders are on primes. But as the lights come up and we get away, as I get off to an absolutely blinding start for once, uh, and pass Shane already make, with a bit of rubbing and trying to get around the outside of LNC. Uh, can't quite do it, but got second place already and Shane's been knocked back a few more places he's either ran wide and got a bit of help along the way and as I just sit in, into the, in the tracks of LNC now just trying to keep it consistent and keep it relatively close but as we move on to lap 2 now you can see LNC's got a bit of a gap already 1.5 seconds and I've just got a second gap to take another leap behind and as you see in the background there's a bit of dust being kicked up and that's Techno Elite running wide so that's dropped him back a bit and now coming into the hairpin, LNC's run wide as well, and that is me into the lead, and LNC will drop back into second place now. And he's taken the lead! Yes, John, yes I am. <laughs> so, uh, managed to hold the lead for, till uh, lap three. As you see, I cut that corner nicely, you get a bit of a corner cut, but run too deep into the second Degna, run, putting it into the gravel, and losing my one a bit second lead to the LNC straight away as so he has a look around the outside trying to help keep it in the hairpin can he make them cut back or go around the outside no not quite and I get a better exit out of the uh, hairpin and managed to pull a little pull away a little bit but that's how it stayed till lap 8 when um, I'm coming into the chicane and uh, you'll hear from the live commentary in a minute what's actually happening um, so I think the live commentary will be about now. So that was basically a barbecue fire. Um, the barbecue just outside the window was on fire. So we had to take a bit of care of that and kind of put me off a little bit. Uh, this is the LNC manages to get around me with the DRS and I'd fall back in and drop back into second place. Um, not really much of an excuse, I know, but it was a it was a bit of a distraction as I could see loads of smoke out the corner of my eye. But as you can see, um, Sir Spuddy has destroyed his vehicle against the pit wall uh, just here, and the safety car has come out, and it is in a really awkward time because the option runners probably would have pitted by now, and the primes were still about five laps left, had five laps on them still. So me, Joe, and Rob. I think probably a few other people pitted as well for options and this is to see LNC is just next to me on the pit lane it's going to be a run out and race out of the pits 
and I managed to take the lead, getting the jump on him. And in my opinion, that's a dangerous release on the Caterham, <laughs> by the Caterham team. But it didn't really make too much difference as I've got the lead now. Um, so coming to the restart and the safety car is in this lap. And I'm just trying to back up the pack a bit here. Trying to get a decent restart. Just trying to weave a little bit and we're off. Get a decent launch. I think I'll catch uh, LNC. I wasn't aware uh, by a little bit. But I'm so tentative into this uh, final chicane. Now basically any advantage I did have is all gone now. Um, so just trying to use as much curse as possible to get away. But I've got a uh, 0.7 second gap to LNC behind so it's actually not overly bad. Um, not as bad as I probably thought it was going to be. And Rob Noxious from the back of the grid is up to third as well. Um, and on to lap 15. I, th I was... Uh, just in front of LNC and Rob Knox as you can see and LNC is going to have a little look I think um, although he's not actually his arrows disappeared but is he going to try to cut back I'm trying to defend and hold it on the inside but LNC has got a better run but no you see the arrows just disappeared there and I think that's him getting it all out of shape and then you can see Rob Knox is now in front of LNC so that's given me a bit of breathing space up until lap 22 when I've reacted to LNC and Rob Noxious's pit stops. Having a quick look at the race uh, director and see Shane's and Aaron, uh, Shane and Techno Elite um, are staying out. Um, and although the tyres probably could have got to the end, I wasn't feeling too confident and I knew that I was racing Shane, uh, racing uh, LNC and Rob Noxious. Um, I knew I was quicker than Techno Elite and Shane, but Shane was probably, as soon as I came in really, I'd known that Shane was going to stay out till the till the end, and it was a bit disappointing because I knew that I probably should have stayed out, but it wasn't to worry, I was just hoping that Shane's tyres would fall off the cliff, uh, but as you see, Techno Elite's in front now, and now, and um, LNC's not too far behind, and I knew I had to get past Techno Elite as soon as possible. Uh, see LNC's arrows just behind there and Techno Elite was quite holding me up quite a bit in that first sector and I just knew I had to get past and if I couldn't then I uh, would have been pretty screwed as LNC was definitely quicker than me as you see a little bit of contact there thankfully not doing anything and uh, <laughs> I'd have, have, starting to have a bit of flashback of um, Australia with Techno Elite but coming up to Spoon I've made this move a few times but running onto the grass and just oh, outbreaking myself Hitting Techno Elite, hitting LNC through, and having to let Techno Elite back through. Thankfully, no penalty, but uh, lost the place in the process. Uh, now, just using a bit of curse to get back past Techno Elite, as I know uh, I can't lose any more time as Rob Noxious is closing in quite quickly. And that was, I had pretty much knew that LNC was pretty much out of touch at that point but you can see I've caught back up to LNC I'm breaking into the chicane I'm gonna get the DRS cutting that corner nicely uh, and LNC doesn't get the best of exits but I'm gonna get the DRS and pro and use the rest of my curves coming down the straight and using a bit of curves and the DRS and it's gonna be close and as he goes defense or oh, moves a little bit but I'm past breaking in for the first corner LNC sticks it around the outside can he hold it can I get the run and LNC still there. Can we go side by side? No, LNC's held the mo held the place. And now I'm just trying to get the cut back through the S's, which is never going to happen. Um, but now at this point, I think I had to switch my fuel back down to standard as I'd gone to optimal. Um, and that allowed Rob Noxious to catch up. As you see, I massively cut the corner there. Got a bit of oversteer under braking, and then not really enough room to correct and go around the corner properly. So I just jumped across it. Um, it didn't actually help me at all. As you see, Rob Noxious is going to get the RS now. He's going to swoop around the outside and stick that move pretty simple. Uh, but I'm trying to come back at him, come down the inside. Rob Noxious is giving me just enough room. It's a fair play. And no, I can't quite get back. And not going to happen through the S's again. Um, but this is turning into a really good race because uh, we were catching Shane by about a second and a half a lap, I think, roughly. Um, but it, you can see on the mini map, Shane's just going around, already going up to Spoon, and we're not even getting to the hairpin. But as you see, LNC's gone wide into the gravel, and I've gone wide, and bam! Hit him in, hitting him, um, spinning him round. 
I wasn't sure if I should have waited at that time, but I thought LNC was coming back onto the track and I had nowhere real, really to go. Um, I said I said to LNC after the race that he can appeal that if he wants, because I can understand why he would, because um, I did spin him round, although I think I would have had the better of him had I not have hit him anyway. Um, but Rob Noxious is three seconds ahead now, so there's no chance of me getting second. But Shane, uh, he's coming across the line any second now to take his first win, playing the cards completely right. He stuck it out on the options uh, for a good 25, uh, for a good 15, 16 laps, and held on to the, wit, the lead to take his first win in GP2. So, so congratulations to him, and thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next week for a track I don't really know and don't really like, which is Korea.